All right, so today we're actually going to be taking a look at uh, finding center of gravity on your rocket and uh, understanding the importance of the relationship between center of gravity and center of pressure. There's a few additional terms that we're actually going to take a look at, which are on the screen. Um, and we'll also kind of talk about uh, how to gain maximum altitude uh, while flying your rocket. So finding the center of gravity is easy. Um, and really all this is is just the balance point of the rocket once it's fully loaded. So we have an engine in, we have our parachute, um, any other components that we need inside the rocket, uh, the rocket's ready to fly, and we find the balance point. You can balance it on your finger, you can tie a string to it, whatever you need to do. Uh, that balance point, once the rocket is sitting completely level, you have found the center of gravity. Um, it's important to understand where the center of gravity is on your rocket because this is the pivot point at which the rocket is going to rotate. The center of pressure is where the uh, average air pressure forces are acting on the rocket during flight. So as the air moves down past the rocket or we have lateral winds, like wind gusts, coming in and uh, applying forces to the rocket, uh, those forces act directly onto, uh, onto the surface area of the rocket um, any surface area, such as the fins, the body tube, the nose cone, whatever it may be, um, it's applying a force, and then you have kind of an average force. And that average force is known as the center of pressure. The forces that are acting on the center of pressure, all right, so that main average force right here, um, this is known as the normal force. Sorry, my arrow is terrible here. Um, this is known as the normal force, or N. Uh, the rocket wants to fly straight. So the rocket will fly straight into the air as long as it isn't disturbed during its flight. But a slight lateral wind, such as we have here, um, could cause a what's known as a thrust misalignment. So thrust is what's, pu what's pushing the rocket forward in the direction that it wants to go, and it's being misaligned. So originally it was flying straight. Now we have a large force pressing on the center of pressure, rotating it around the center of gravity, and it is being pushed off course. So as the rocket's being pushed off, off this path, uh, with the path of direction of flight that it wants to go, the rocket begins to tilt, creating what's referred to as the angle of attack. So the angle of attack, um, we also use the abbreviation alpha, so just an A here. Um, so alpha, this is the angle of attack. Um, so now it is off by a certain amount of degrees. Uh, knowing the stability of a rocket is actually quite important uh, but now comes the question of, you know, how stable is it? The farther back the, the CP is, or the center of pressure is behind the center of gravity, the more stable the rocket's going to be. So we want that center of pressure as far back as we can get it. Um, and this is kind of where the alpha comes into play. All right, so the alpha is now very important. Um, because as this increases, the center of pressure begins to move forward. Uh, because what happens is before the rocket starts to fly in that direction, um, if a gust of wind comes in and forces that rocket sideways, the rocket is now flying into the wind like this. So it's kind of flying crooked. And obviously, because of that, it becomes less stable. It doesn't want to fly that way. Uh, so we want a rocket to fly as straight as possible um, with as little alpha or angle of attack as possible. Um, so as these lateral winds occur, uh, the rocket's going to constantly try to adjust its flight path. Um, and it's going to try and adjust it into the wind. And this is actually called uh, weather cocking, all right? So when this occurs, right, 
This is known as weathercocking. And in order to avoid this, uh, we want to try to keep our center of pressure as far back as possible to give that center of pressure room to move around as it needs. So a good rule of thumb is to make sure that the distance between the center of gravity and the center of pressure, so this distance here, is equal to or greater than the diameter or the diameter of the rocket body itself. So if I have a two inch rocket body here, then I want at least two inches between my center of pressure and the center of gravity. And that will allow for a much more stable flight and allow you to gain the maximum altitude 